And uh, so today we're going to be talking about crystals, um, um, what you can do with them, what they mean, how uh, you can use them properly. And for that, we also have the beloved Nick Melnicki on. So welcome back, Nick. Greetings, everyone. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you again. So uh, this podcast is going to be, well, it is an awesome one, obviously, because we have all of you watching. We have us here. We have Nick Melnicki. And uh, so we, we do have a bunch of crystals that we want to talk about. And uh, so I think I'll go ahead and give give it over to Shantastic Shine because she's more educated about the crystals than I. Right. Well, we just had um, a couple of crystals uh, picked out that we want to talk to you guys about today. We have some, some amethyst and citrine, jade and kyanite, uh, labradorite, and then we also have the, the seven crystals for the, the chakras and any crystals that Nick Monicki may want to bring to the table today. Did you have any crystals that you wanted to talk about, Nick? Yeah, I got a ton in front of me here. I just acquired some new ones. Um, for me, I'm a I'm a Scorpio, and the Scorpio um, birthstone is citrine. And for me, uh, I really like that because uh, the, the yellow color is associated with the solar plexus, which is like the willpower and the... <coughs> The desire to just do stuff, you know, and, and, and really put your effort into what you feel like doing. So I, I have a nice little citrine cluster that I carry with me a lot. And That's beautiful. When I, when I meditate with this, or when I just relax with it and have it in my hand, it literally gives me energy similar to what some people would feel with coffee. So I like to just spend some time with this before I, I go on a walk or go work out or play an instrument or whatever. It just gives me that nice little kickstart. And um, just have a... I always have quartz on me, it seems. And quartz is just kind of an amplifier with anything. If you're feeling crappy and you have quartz, you're going to feel more crappy. If you feel <laughs> great and you have quartz, you're going to feel more great. Um, but pretty much for me, it's it's right now it's all about the yellow and red and clear crystals, and just the the lower chakras, the grounding and, and balancing those aspects. Uh, really desiring to be in the body and do things with the body, hang out with friends, create things, and amethyst that Shannon mentioned is always a good one for me. I have a this is my biggest piece. Amethyst cluster. Yeah. We have matching pieces on this. It looks, yeah, it looks almost exactly the same. Nice. I put this uh, near my head when I go to sleep, along with uh, quartz and some apophyllite. Amethyst is a really good third eye stone, so sleeping with it is uh, definitely recommended if you want to increase your, your dream state and be able to remember it more. So. Totally. Put this, put this bad boy right there. Go to <laughs> I've noticed significant uh, increase in recalling dreams and lucid dreams uh, with using these crystals for bedtime or even taking like a five minute meditation before you go to bed and just tap into that feeling. But crystals are just so great. Whatever you're, you're feeling, um, each energy center on the body has its own specific attributes. And depending on the color of the crystal, they have their own specific attributes as well. And if you can match the color with that specific energy center, regardless of what the crystal name is or anything, you can just go by color, um, it will increase or balance or heal or assist or any of those words, that particular attribute or attributes. And um, I've noticed profound benefits just kind of going by that. Yeah, that sounds uh, quite beautiful, and I did enjoy the the big amethyst. I think amethyst is one of my most uh, beloved stones personally, just because it's so beautiful and um, I don't know, it just really resonates with me a lot. I, I like the color purple a lot. It's been with me since I started really um, fully embodying my own spiritual self and divine mm -hmm. self. Um, I also have this piece of, it's like amethyst, but it's also called spirit quartz amethyst. And it's mm. got these extra little clusters to it. 
Have you ever heard of Spirit Quartz or anything about that one, Nick? Yeah, Spirit Quartz is something else. Just like uh, there's there's some crystals that are just kind of really high frequency, uh, high vibration, and they just really make that non-physical connection stuff really intense and really easy to tap into, and I think Spirit Quartz is one of those that helps that. So that and Amethyst is just like a powerhouse. Nice. Yeah, my Spirit Quartz actually it looks almost identical to Amethyst, so I'm, I'm, I kind of think it's like Quartz mixed with Amethyst. Nice. Pretty sweet. Um, but you were saying about Citrine, too. Citrine's one of your favorites because um, it's, it's not only a birthstone, but it's just also, it's in general, a really good... Uh, it's a sunstone, and it's a stone that helps build self-confidence and um, enhances concentration, and just really is like good for the mind. And you've really been uh, like building your your mind work and your communication skills and stuff like that. So citrine seems to be a really good one for that in general. For totally. Everybody. So I only have these two little pieces of it right now, but they're some of my favorites. Nice. Yeah, they're beautiful too. Citrine was uh, one of the first stones I, I said that we should talk about on the show. Just it's so pretty and beautiful, and it makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you have another stone you'd like to talk about? Um, yeah, actually, I have it on my neck here, and these two are the ammonites. So I have uh, nice. ammonite, double ammonite, um, uh, organite here, or keystone. <laughs> uh, a bunch of enterprise made this. And uh, ammonite. Every time I, I look at it, I just um, I start spiraling down, sort of in in whatever thought that I have at that moment. So uh, ammonite is a really good stone to to go deeper into thoughts. So if you have something that you want to learn more about, you can have uh, ammonite around you, and it, it just gives you that um, extra boost uh, to to go deeper into any subject that may be on your mind. So. I would definitely recommend this if you like to learn or if you want to learn something more deeply and, and understand it in a deeper sense. Um, so, Ammonite. It's definitely one of my favorites. I always think of the, the Fibonacci spiral when I look at Ammonite. Mm -hmm. because it, it spirals inwards so nicely, yeah. trying to show it. But What is, uh, does anybody, can anybody explain further what the Fibonacci Spiral is all about. Um, it's I don't know too much scientific information on it. It's just mostly intuitive stuff. But like it all goes to the phi ratio, which is like there's a ratio where our arm. Uh, what is it? It's like the arm is the same scale to the shoulder to the elbow, the elbow to the wrist, the wrist to the fingertips. Um, the individual knuckles and all that stuff and, and through the body. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci talks a, uh, a lot about this. If you want to do like a quick Google search, you can find out all about it. But it's mm -hmm. like if a human body is to that specific scale, it's termed like it's very beautiful to the eye to perceive it. Like if the mouth is a certain scale, the nose, the eyes, etc., it's like the most pristine kind of... DNA, whatever, but it's like it's it's this this scale that goes throughout all of of life. Um, flowers and plants and leaves are are grown to this specific scale. You can see it in a pine cone is the probably the what people would recognize the most. Mm. Mm. I believe um, it's generally just like the the code behind every level like living thing in general, they, they even um, associate it with like galaxies and that's why it has the same spiral feature and everything like that. Yeah, totally. It's like uh, you do one and then one again and then you add those and you get two. So then you would do two plus one would equal three and then you would take that and you would add the one previous. So two plus three is five and then Five plus three is eight, and then you just consecutively do that, and it goes on forever. And you can just you can scale your art that way. You can create different um, harmonics for music, and these this using this scale in art, it's going to make it look much more. Well, I shouldn't say much more, but it'll make it 
quite easy to make a beautiful art piece. Um, using that scale of music would make it quite easy to make it uh, sound very good to you. Um, it just it's crazy. So definitely look into it. Mm. Nice. Um, so a stone that I would personally like to share, I, I have two of them. Um, the first one I'd really like to share is Labradite. I, I definitely Ooh, love nice. Labradite. Yeah, I have this nice piece here. On one side, it's polished, and it's, the, the camera doesn't really do it justice, where in, in the light, it kind of, like, sparkles blue, and it's got, like, a iridescent look to it. In the back, it's real natural, so um, I, I like to think that it's got both... Uh, natural and polished properties, because some stones act different when when they're polished versus raw too, and that's something um, I'm gonna look more into and do a, a, a what is one for the, for the website. That way we can figure out exactly how to be using them. But labradorite, what it does is it it's like a mystical stone, and it aligns the physical and the etheric bodies, and just generally it's used for protection and healing. Um, it's good for banishing different fears and different insecurities. And it's also really good for helping get rid of uh, psychic debris from um, just like previous connections. So if you're, if you're someone who connects a lot with other people's thoughts or feelings and you're an empath or just a telepath in general, Labradite's a good one to keep around because it helps protect you from, from those feelings and keeping it attached to you. So it's also good for disorders in the eyes and the brain and relieves stress and regulates different things in your metabolism. So Labradorite is just a really awesome stone to keep around and it's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, when you can shine it in the light at just the right angle you can see all these iridescent colors. It's so amazing. It's trying really hard but the camera just man. There's, there's no way. <laughs> I know, there's like no way to get how awesome it really is. I even have two different pieces of it here. This one here is completely raw and it's got like this one spot to the light. It's just really blue and beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I was reading the comments in the chat. Um, going back to the Fibonacci spiral, uh, Samantha said she was measuring her arm to see if that's what her arm was measuring up to. <laughs> Did she get a measurement? Did she? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if what I said was exactly correct just uh, with in terms of what parts of the body to do. It's like the chin to the, the head is the same as like the chin to the nose or whatever. Yeah. But it's it's all online to look. Maybe I can get that up and we'll share it at the end or we'll do a what is section for the website on that. One crystal I'd like to point out is uh, black tourmaline. It's really good for... I got a nice little pyramid shape here. <laughs> it's really good for protecting um, and just kind of like having a nice space that that can't be be broken into um, if you're really sensitive like a lot of us are nowadays just having black tourmaline and, and having it touching your skin holding it in your hand or something and actually the more intense you hold it the, the stronger it's going to affect you um, with pressure but anyways having it on your person and touching your skin it will allow you to be much less uh, sensitive to the bad things while still keeping your sensitivity open to be able to experience life in whichever way that you do in specific. But any kind of black stone really helps with protection. Yeah, tourmaline is one of uh, my favorites. It comes in a lot of different colors, but the black in general is really good for... Um, it's, it kind of like soaks up negativity and stuff mm. like that so that it doesn't soak up into you. Yeah, so the black stones are definitely a good one to keep around. And definitely make sure with these protection ones, like Shannon said, soaks it up. You gotta clear it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta <laughs> seriously. Did you have something to say? No, I just want to say that black tourmaline. I saw that uh, one of the major places that it's found is uh, Sri Lanka. <laughs> Silo, I still have this. It broke though. Really? Oh, that's a dark dark moss agate with obsidian. Yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. I love agates. Like any type of agate is, a, is something that I really I really enjoy having around. Any kind of agate. 
Did you have a crystal you wanted to talk about? No, no. Okay. You guys are. I mean, <laughs> I, I do love crystals, but I feel like you guys have more more of a passion for them than. than I you. have so many here right mm -hmm. now. I just want to talk about them all, but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> I just brought all mine in from the the full moon. They they were gonna get snowed on. They had a little bit on it from overnight, but yeah. they were supercharged. So I'm like surrounded by supercharged awesome right now. Yeah, when I brought them in, and I was just like holding my hands over it, it felt like I just ingested like 300 grams of sugar. I was just like really wired. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> my heart rate was going up. It was crazy. Personally, I think the the snow kind of helped mine at least because they were warmer than I thought they'd be. I was kind of worried about them because I've never really put them out like that when it was supposed to snow, but. The snow melted off of them like almost instantly, and when I picked a couple of them up, they were still so warm. So it was like the the water yeah. it actually cleansed them too. I was just worried about some of mine that um that don't need to get wet, like my selenite and my kyanite. And you got to be careful with some of those crystals because some crystals just aren't supposed to be wet because they will crumble on you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, Samantha, let me just read a comment from Samantha real quick. She said um that she's been using a lot of, or she's been uh, using Red Jasper and Tiger's Eye lately. Ooh, I have this piece mm. of Red Jasper that I love. Yeah, Jasper is beautiful, beautiful I, stone. I was looking for Tiger's Eye, but I don't actually have a piece. Do you have yours nearby? My my Tiger's Eye that uh, I just got gifted is, it's not nearby right now. But, I just uh, wonder. It's charging up. Let's see. Did you have another crystal you wanted to talk about for a moment, Nick? Uh, yeah, Celestite. It's like a sky blue kind of deal, another pyramid shape. Um, it's very calm and relaxing while still maintaining that amethyst kind of property type of thing. Um, it's more, for me, it just, if I have a lot of thoughts racing or just any, it's, I don't even know, it's like a really calming and clearing while maintaining a high frequency kind of crystal because normally when I use um, a grounding stone or a calming thing it'll bring me into the body and kind of take away from the place that I was able to reach or the place that I was in in terms of like feeling expansiveness and using this it's for me it's like a grounding stone in the non-physical body <laughs> and it's I, I don't have too much specific information on it. I don't really research crystals anymore. I just go by intuitive feel, but definitely something to check out. Cool. Um, I just wanted to read a question that Re had. Now, I, want, I would like both of your guys' input. She says, how do I recharge crystals? Uh, do you have to do each of them differently? Because she really needs to recharge hers. What I do is I, I, use, I have them by my selenite all of the time, so that helps because selenite is a crystal that has its own infinite energy, if you will. It doesn't need to be charged, it doesn't need to be cleared, and if crystals are near it or on it, I think it's better if they're on. It'll clear and charge to a small degree, but as always, the sun is the best for charging and the moon is the best for clearing. It's kind of like that masculine, feminine type of deal. But uh, the moon is good for clearing and charging. The sun is good for clearing and charging. You got to be careful with that sun, though. With ones like um, amethyst and citrine, maybe not so much citrine, but amethyst, I know the sun will take the color away if you have it out there too much. So oh, really? There are, yeah, there are certain crystals that you don't want to leave out in the sun because the heat and the sunlight will drain them. Um, and that this is definitely one of them, so be careful with that. Have you yeah. noticed a change in the attributes if the color changes? Well, actually what happens with amethyst is if it's heated too much, it turns into citrine. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, amethyst is the raw form of citrine, and citrine is when amethyst gets heated up or compressed or chipped off in um, some other chemical reaction is uh, what happens, and that creates citrine. And that's why citrine's like a supercharged crystal and it's also really good for charging and cleansing crystals like selenite um, but amethyst and citrine they work really well together at charging all your crystals but if you leave amethyst out it'll start to drain color and first it'll go clear almost like a quartz but it'll still have like a purple tint to it and mm. once it gets heated up then it'll turn orange 
So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. so be careful on what crystals you put outside because yeah. they'll, they'll drain their color. Not all of them. Mighty Morphin some crystals. That's sweet. I want to do like a half and half on, on this big guy. Like put a <laughs> half in this thing. Awesome. That Just would be pretty half, crazy, actually. Cover half of it up. Um, but you would have to pretty much for something like that, you would have to fire half of it. So you would have to like hold hold it in some sort of like claw and like fire only half of it if even possible. Like um, this, you get a lighter. Well, that would work too. <laughs> Part of the reason I I researched that was on this spirit quartz amethyst that I have, where the amethyst is really purple. Um, to answer the question that we had, how I charge a lot of my crystals is I use <laughs> candles and stuff like that. I was determined to try it. Look at him. Um, but how I charge a lot of my crystals is I use I use the sun for some of them. Um, another good way to ch uh, charge or cleanse them is certain kinds of water. Um, now, don't do that with stellanite or kyanite or any of your more uh, flimsy crystals that could chip or fall apart. Um, but your your nice solid ones, uh, just giving them a good rinse off is really good. Uh, now it really depends on personal preference on whether you want to do them separately or together. I've when I did do a lot of research on it, I've seen people who will put them all in like a big water bath and then charge them all under a candle. Um, now if you're worried that they're just certain crystals, sometimes they don't their energies don't go together like quartz, like you said will amplify anything. So if you keep a quartz really close to one of your crystals that you're using with intention to collect out the negativity, if you rinse them together and you charge them together, then they're probably going to work together very well, but it could also amplify the negativity instead of amplifying positivity. So um, like whatever intention you put into that crystal is really important to how you cleanse it. And you can change the intention by completely just when you cleanse it, just clear the thought or intention that you put into it and then put something new into it and meditate with that crystal to to really put its purpose into what you need it for. Um, uh, I did have a question for Marie, if that's okay. I'm not for Marie, but Samantha, sorry. Samantha asked if his, um, she asked, is Amatrine, is what she called it, Amatrine, is that just as effective as using uh, Citrine and Amethyst? together in separate form? Um, let's see. Give me one second here. and then I have this awesome book, and I like to look up things that I'm not 100% sure on. That way I don't give you guys the wrong information. It's called The Crystal Bible, and it's by Judy Hall. I, like, love this thing. I got it for Easter, actually, from my family, and it has helped me on my crystal journey immensely. Um, Finding the ametrine that you mentioned, it says that it's powerfully combined amethyst and citrine. Ooh. So that's perfectly on. Good job there, Samantha. Ametrine. It's that's nice. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Man, the picture is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. That the crystal that beautiful. she's talking about, it looks about like that. This book just shows you pretty much exactly what it is and helps you identify it. So if you ever have a crystal that you're, you're not sure of, um, if you can't personally purchase the book. If you want to shoot me a message, I can look it up and gladly give you some more information because I love looking up crystals. It helps me learn. But to answer your question, it says that it's fast and effective in its action and is particularly useful in long-standing illnesses as it brings insight to the cause of the disease and helps connect it. So, yeah, Ametrine is definitely an awesome crystal. It's pretty much like I said, amethyst turns into citrine, so it's like that middle form when it's got both attributes of both crystals. I know what crystal I want to manifest next. <laughs> Some amethyst <laughs> works. I didn't even know that existed. That's absolutely yeah, like, that is one of the most beautiful crystals it's, I've ever seen. It's really funny that she said that because when I was looking up amethyst and citrine, as Nick was talking both times, I accidentally flipped to the amethyst. <laughs> So just intuitively, the book knew that it needed to be talked about. Yeah. Look at me, Shannon. Look at this page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Thank you for much. bringing that up, Samantha. That's a, that was a good question. Perfect timing, too, since we were talking about amethyst and citrine. Yeah. Nice. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. But, yeah, real quick, Re, to charge your crystals, you can cleanse them underwater, put them on selenite. Like Nick said, selenite is awesome. Um... I also, when I specifically pick crystals that I want to put intent to, I will just kind of, when I get a bath, I'll light a candle and sit the, the 
the crystals around it. That way the candle, the energy from the candlelight itself is going into my crystals and the intention that I'm putting into them. And that's a way that I, I charge them with intent or purpose. So if I, if I want to, um, if I have a headache or I want to heal something or someone and I really want that intention in there, I will specifically set up almost like a grid or a, not even a ritual, I can't think of the word, an altar, there we go, an altar with the, the specific crystals so that they can charge with the candle or I rinse them off. So those are just a couple ways to go ahead and charge your crystals or put intent into them from my yeah. point of view. We got, about, um, we got about a few more minutes to discuss a few more things and then we're going to take a, take a break before the cosmic energy forecast. All right, let me share a really quick story about okay. this rock. Oh. So I was gifted, this is just a regular rock, it's not a special crystal, and it's painted. I was gifted this by a friend, and uh, a couple weeks ago I was down in Ferndale with my friend, and we were buying bagels, and I took it out of my pocket, and I was holding it, and I was like, okay, no big deal, just like average holding a crystal. And then I was like, I gave it to him. I was like, hey, check this out, because he hasn't seen it before. And I have him look at the, the different colors and the paintings and stuff. And as soon as I gave it to him, we just, like, both became silent and just, like, looking around. And I noticed that my sense of smell was so profound that it just made me stop and smell. And, like... I don't usually have crazy sense, sensory experiences, but I smelt money, I smelt all of the different kind of bagels, I smelt all of the different kind of cream cheese. Mm -hmm. It was like, I had like 30 different smells being smelt at the same time, and I was like, Mike, dude, like, do you, are you experiencing this? And he was do doing the same thing, he didn't know what was going on. But like that kind of experience, that shared experience, just from a random, you know, gift, crazy. That's awesome. Did you say who painted that, or? or? Uh, Bevan. Some of you nice. may know her on off of Facebook. Yeah, Bevan is uh, awesome, and she's really. She got it in California when she was having like she was really feeling high frequency, and it just kind of was in front of her. Oh, that's nice. nice. Well, like shout out to Bevan. Shout out to Bevan for the Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I had a, at least two more stones I wanted to to share really quick that I, I think are really helpful, especially in this current um, shift that we're experiencing energetically. Um, this is probably personally my favorite stone, at least that I have and that I use to to help with healing. Um, it's, it's called malachite. And it's a green stone. Mm, nice. Yeah, it kind of looks like broccoli, honestly. But it's really <laughs> up close and personal because it's got so much glitter. And are you holding up one too? Yeah, and I got a flashlight. <laughs> nice, good job. But what it is is it's just it's a really good power stone. And the the way I came across malachite was I have a book on different crystal meditations and how to use them for intent. And the, the Malachite page, like I, like the Amatrine just did for me, it just kept opening up. And it really just wanted me to have a piece of Malachite. So when I put that intention out there, I not only received um, a piece of Malachite in the mail at the most perfect time, I also ran into um, a gentleman that was selling and trading it. And he had this really large piece, and I tried to buy it from him, and he actually tr he wouldn't let me purchase it. He said I had to trade him for it because he said that malachite will find its owner at the most specific time. Um, now the other piece I got was heart-shaped. And um, earlier last year, I had lost my grandmother. But before that, she was really sick, and I just kept calling out for a crystal. It, and to some people, that may sound silly. But to people who really believe in crystals and their healing power, they, yes. they know that the certain ones will come to them right when they need it. And Malachite found its way to me, and literally the day she went back into the hospital, I received a Malachite heart in the mail. And what it's good for is it soaks out negativity, and it soaks out disease, as well as it protects the person that you're trying to heal with it. So Malachite, to me, is a really, really important stone, but it's also a really powerful one. So if you get your hands on a piece of Malachite, and it, it calls to you, or it it pretty much becomes yours, make sure you cleanse it, because what can happen with Malachite is if you 
use it for too many things or if it soaks up too much negativity, it will start to um, emit it back at you. But when it's fully cleansed and charged properly, it will just bring you so much light and it will help heal as much as possible. Um, and it's just so beautiful and sparkly to begin with. And it's just... Um, <laughs> There we go. The only thing with it is, is it is slightly toxic, especially in its raw form, which is the, the piece I have is a raw form. Um, but it's it's kind of like a copper. It's got some copper in it, but it amplifies both positive and negative energies, and it grounds spiritual energy to the planet. So um, part of its purpose is to just to ground us in our spiritual form and to help with the healing process and to soak up anything that we don't need. So Malachite is definitely one of my favorites and just a piece that when when it comes to you or if it comes to you, hold on to it and take proper care of it because it's a really important crystal. Mm. Beautiful. And, Thank you. Yeah. Did you have any more you wanted to share real quick, Nick? Um, no, nothing in specific, but just kind of everyone take a second, well not right now, but when you think about crystals, take a second and find what your goals are. You know, I want to dream more. I want to, you know, manifest something. I want to ground myself more. And just go research it really fast and then see whatever catches your eye. Go by the colors. That's a really good basic way to, you know, start off or to just find what works for you. And just go crazy because, I mean, I'm feeling so high frequency right now, it's like feeling like I'm on drugs or something and I'm completely sober and it's just because I'm playing with crystals. How cool is that? So just dive right in. You can't do it wrong. Totally. I think that's why I'm probably so high speed and talking a little fast. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down for everybody, but like I said, they're just supercharged and I love them so much. Oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, real quick. Tibetan quartz. Yes. It's a specific quartz. It it is it is potential uh, uh, consistently increasing in vi uh, vibration because in Tibet it's a pretty nice spot on Earth and it's always increasing in frequency because everyone's always kicking butt over there. So if you have a Tibetan quartz or if you're interested in getting one, you will consistently notice different meditations or changes or feelings from it because it's constantly leveling up. So a cool one to, to get your hands on. Nice. Um, the, one of the last ones I, I wanted to share before I did a quick run through of what crystals are good for your chakras is um, kyanite. And I just it's, I have a kind of smaller piece here. It's blue and it's one that you don't necessarily want to get too wet because it will it'll start to get soft and possibly break on you. But kyanite's really good for anyone that's really getting into crystals. Um, what it does is it helps with uh, attunements and getting your, your chakras all charged up and aligned. And it's really good for meditation and just tranquilizing your power and your personal spirit. And it, um, it amplifies high frequency and it doesn't, it doesn't hold any negativity at all. So unlike the malachite which will soak up and hold the negativity and then start to sort of um, explode with it if it gets too much in it. The, the kyanite will not hold the negativity. It repels it and it encourages a, a, the person of it to speak its truth. And it's really just a good crystal to have to be stressed with and to help you on your, on your divine path. Mm. So kyanite's another one of my favorites. Beautiful. Um, kyanite! <laughs> and then I know CeeLo wants to get over to the space weather, but real quick, I just wanted to uh, to share with everybody the different crystals. There's seven, um, there's actually multiple, but seven main crystals that um, people use to connect with their chakras. And um, the first one I have for your root chakra is red jasper. And it's, nice. it's really good for your base and um, keeping you grounded and just in general, it's a nice grounding stone. Good for the, the root chakra. You gotta write this down. <laughs> and then for your sacral chakra, what a good one is um, this one here. It's carnelian. Nice. Yeah, it's an orange stone. Ah! There it goes. It's really <laughs> up, guys. I'm sorry for that one. Um, but just in general, carnelian is good. It's for um, like your sexuality and 
charging up all those things. It's also good for fertility and stuff like that. And then for your solar plexus and <laughs> <laughs> I know I've always had a giggle. Anyway, so up to <laughs> the solar plexus we have, and it's just uh, citrine, the one yes. that we both love. That's your solar plexus chakra. And like Nick said, it's just it's really awesome for, for everything. So And topaz. Citrine can, yeah. citrine or topaz, but it's both. Yeah. No, that's definitely good. It's good to have alternatives too. And the ones I'm mentioning, they aren't the only ones for those specific chakras. Generally ones in the colors that the chakras are present will help with them. But um, I've got I think two or three different chakra sets and these are the ones that have been been used. Now, speaking of multiple, for the heart chakra, um, usually that, that chakra is represented in green. So in my set, they've given me the green aventurine. And it's good for just in, like, the heart chakra and love and just balancing out all of those romantic feelings in general. But it, rose quartz and tiger's eye are also really good for, for your heart chakra. Um, and then for your throat chakra... I've got this one here, and it is blue lace agate, I believe, or sodalite is also good for your throat chakra. Soda, the drink, not is good. Not, no. not good for your throat. Sodalite, it's a, it's a light blue stone, um, <laughs> and it's, it's really pretty. It looks a lot like lapis, which is usually the third eye stone, but my third eye stone is represented... Um, it's by like a, a tiger's eye lapis mix in the set that I have, but generally the third eye stone is really good um, amethyst or lapis or um, anything purpley or blue is really good for your third eye. I have this piece of it's called like cucasilla or something, and it's really shiny. Cucasilla. And it's it's really good for for your third eye too. What do you and think this one is? Can't see it. Looks like lapis. That is it. From what I see, it looks like lapis, but it could be brighter than lapis. I don't even know. It could be. Um, I'll have to look that one up for you. I have another term for it, but I don't necessarily know how to pronounce it. Some of these crystal names, they're really hard to pronounce, guys. So I apologize if there's anyone that's higher up on the crystal food chain than me that can pronounce them better and I'm tearing up the names. You can let me know, and I will correct it some other time. But we're doing the crystals here. will haunt you in your dreams. And <laughs> you I'm giant. And then lastly, <laughs> I have my, the crown chakra. And in my set, it's represented by amethyst. But um, quartz and anything clear is also really good for the the crown chakra. Nice. So that's that's the set that I have. And those are some of the crystals I would recommend to help balance out your chakras. And I use that that heart set that I showed you. That's something I like to use when I'm doing Reiki and different things like that. So. Crystals are just generally awesome healing tools and just fun things to have around and really pretty. Awesome. I, uh, I posted a, a status earlier on Facebook, actually, just to see what some of my, my Facebook friends' crystals' favorites were. Um, I had James Scramlin, who said he really likes amber and carnelian. He says that it's life force and motivation that draws into these crystals. Um, he likes to travel inside the crystal and use it as meditation, and it just, like, let's see... Sitting inside it figuratively immerses you in its energy, he says. Some crystals have an entity there, and I visited inside a clear quartz crystal, actually the first one I ever owned, and it had a very cool derpy dragon in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, David Dreamwalker, who we, uh, Diamond Heart, we had him on the, the podcast a few weeks ago. He says his favorite crystal is the Illustrial Quartz. Um, his second favorite is the Herkimer Diamond, and I really like the Herkimer Diamond, yeah. too. Herkimer. Yeah, it's, it's really good for increasing... Um, um, Jody from Peace Queen. She says selenite. She loves selenite probably as much as you do, Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Love selenite. Oh. Um, Lepidolite says Lady Liz. It helps balance out her mood. And Moonstone just makes her feel majestic. Let's see. Thomas Glass shared a nice piece of Elestral and Skeletal Amethyst also and a nice chunk of fuzzy rhodochondrite and pyrite. So those are just a couple of crystals that um, some of my Facebook viewers wanted to share and really called out to them. So I was, I was glad to get a response to that. It sees that it's not just me on my Facebook that loves crystals. And I'm sure there are many more. I kind of posted that a little late. So. Yeah. 
All right, we got Samantha. So Samantha, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yay! Hi, guys. Hey, Samantha. It's so good to see you. Hey, it's good <laughs> to see you too. So I have a few crystals that you guys didn't talk about that I wanted to share, even though I don't really know much about them because they were all gifted to me. So <laughs> maybe um, I can find them in my book yeah, for you. That's what I was thinking. So the first one I'm just gonna show you because I love this one and I don't even know like. It's strawberry obsidian. Ooh. I know. Nice. And just like I don't even know like the name of it alone. It again? Just like it's in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> that is bright. Yeah. Ooh, it's so pretty and pink. That is, yeah. That is beautiful. I love it's it. In here. What was it called again? Strawberry obsidian. Strawberry obsidian. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was that type of obsidian. Um, I don't have a, a strawberry obsidian. Maybe. Hold on. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Apparently there's a lot of different kinds of obsidian. Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of obsidian. I don't have a, a strawberry one. Um, but I do have one that's called rainbow. That maybe it has some attributes, kind of. It says that it's more of a gentle obsidian with a strong protective property. And it just teaches you about your spiritual nature. It also is good for cord cutting, and old love gently releases hooks that others have left in the heart so that you can open it for plenty of heart energy. Um, that's, that's about the closest I have. I've never seen a strawberry obsidian. It's really pretty. Yeah, no, I know. When he sent it to me, I was just like, what is this? It's so. It looks like it's glowing. It yeah. does. Yeah, it's super, it's like, super yeah. Um, bright. Beautiful. That's yeah. a keeper, definitely. Oh, I know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones were Budstone. Bloodstone. I actually Bud really like Bud. B -U -D. Bloodstone. B U D? Yeah. Budstone. What, what do you do with it? It's also you... called um, like African Jasper, I think. Does it make you like... feel elevated? Uh, <laughs> Not really. I'm not sure. What <laughs> <laughs> I like to find any information on it. When I look. yeah, I can't. It's not in my in my book either. What was the other name for it? What kind Af of jasper? African. Or maybe it's African jade. I always mix it up. Let's see. What color is it? Let me see it all the time. It is. Green. Ooh, it's it almost really green. looks like um, similar to malachite. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely looks like a jade to me. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the jade. Yeah, um, it's supposed to calm the nervous system and channels passion in constructive ways. Um, it relates to the green jade and can be used to harmonize dysfunctional relationships. So it's very, very harmonizing stone for you. Sweet. Thank you. That's, nice. that's what it can do for me. <laughs> <laughs> And then the last two, I always mix these two up, but I think the bigger one is Epidote. Nice. Ooh, that's nice. Man, that's so beautiful. I like that you have really, ex not the kind of exotic ones that I haven't really did a whole <laughs> lot of. I know, it was so funny, like, when you guys were going through all yours, and then when I brought up the Amatrine. I was like, what? I stumped, like, the crystal geniuses. <laughs> it's like, none of you guys have heard of it. <laughs> I don't have epidote. Is that what you said, epidote? Epidote. Epidote. Yeah, I don't really have it in here either. It's funny, because, like, literally the only E in this shocker Bible is emerald. That's the only <laughs> E that's in here. And that's what I would assume that is, is spelled with. I don't know if I could find it on here. What was the other one that I had? Oh, and then the other one is unikite. Unikite? Mm-hmm. Mm, I actually like Unikite. I use it in my in some jewelry. It's really good for releasing things. Um, let me see if my book has anything else. It's um it's a stone of vision. It helps balance emotions and spirituality. It's good for being placed on your third eye. It opens and promotes visualization, uh, visualization, psychic vision, and more. It provides grounding when it's needed and can also be useful for other meditation or psychic work. Um, anything else here? 
It's supportive in recovering from major illnesses, and it helps treat the reproductive system and stimulates weight gain where required and where unrequired helps release it. It aids in healthy pregnancy and the growth of skin tissue and hair and other organs. So that seems to be a really good one for you. Wow. Very cool. Thank you, so. Shane. Um, I looked up the epidote for you. I didn't. I never seen it. Epidote. Yeah. Let's see. My screen's a loading here. It's meditating. Oh, no, is that? <laughs> I, I grabbed a Faden quartz and a Herkimer diamond, and I put the Herkimer diamond on top of my amethyst cluster, and I put my left hand receiving on that, and it was like I just smoked a bowl. It was I never felt that <laughs> fast of a crystal. A so bushman. Let's see, epidote. It's found in Austria and Alaska. It doesn't tell me what it's good for. What is it good for? Absolutely. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it just says that it's very brittle and um, now I'm curious. It's one I don't know. <laughs> Iron source of the light system. Yeah. What's your favorite crystal that you don't have yet, Samantha? That I don't have? Mm-hmm. Or that you would like to acquire? Like, my list is like a mile long <laughs> at the moment. What's the first one that comes to mind when you think of, man, I really need this one that comes to mind? Probably Labradorite. Yes, I love it. It's so cool. Okay, so your epidote, it says that the meaning of it will bring you more of whatever you emanate. It follows then that if you are generous, it will bring you more bounty. If you are loving and kind, it will bring you more love and kindness. Um, it works with your desirable qualities, and if you're negative, it will pull more negative t towards you. Um, so it's definitely just one of those what you reap is what you sow kind of crystals when you have it around you. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> what well, that brought my what that brought to to mind for me was it made me think of a crystal grid mm -hmm. that I wanted to just mention, which is called the octahedron, and it's uh, used. Um, with the Merkaba, and it helps magnify uh, any energy that you're you're putting into it. So that, that's why it reminded me of that. You guys will have to do an episode on crystal grids because I'm curious about that. Oh yes, I'm excited for that. I'm really excited that we we got to do an episode on crystals. I've been kind of waiting on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shannon, I was going to ask you if you wanted to talk about how to set up a basic grid because I know you're you're all things the grid, you know. So, uh, my grid, called, uh, <laughs> a grid connoisseur. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could, I could try to set up a, a grid quickly, or I could do a um, different. Well, just like use okay. use quartz in this way. Put this in the center. Put this at the top or the bottom. Yeah. Or is there a top and a bottom? Make a spiral. You know, whatever. Um, when I make grids, I don't necessarily try to, to have a top or a bottom. I really, I try to like feel the crystal and put it in the place that it, it's, it's calling for. Um, I like to balance things out, so if I have like a bigger crystal on one end, I do try to put one on the other end so that there isn't really a top or a bottom and it doesn't get too heavy or out of balance and all the energy can just like flow fluently. Mm. Um, I have this quartz here. It's, it's actually got like a, a rainbow encased in it. But a quartz wand or something like a quartz with a point is really good for connecting them. So when you, like let's say you have a crystal here, a crystal here, and here and here, it's good to just kind of like meditate on it and draw the energy and connect them in the space. And like he said, like Silo said, um, is that what he said? I got a hedron. Yeah. In different uh, sacred geometry symbols are really good to place them in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would I would suggest printing off a um, printing off a, in a picture of your favorite uh, sacred geometry piece, like a flower of life or or a merkaba or just whatever that really calls to you. It's, it helps to print it out. Um, like David Diamond Hart was talking about how he has to have everything exact because that helps uh, just make those energies even more intense. Mm -hmm. 
So if yeah. you could like turn on an image and then just put those crystals on each uh, point where the line touches is, is a good thing to do. That's yeah. such a good idea. I'm out. I'm actually working on for Shantastic Shine for my for my website. I've got um, right now I have a lot of garnet that I'm getting ready to create. Um, crystal grid packages and like a little how-to about crystal grids and I'm going to be making crystal grid cloth so um, this, there's to wrap the crystals in and also we'll have the symbols on it so you can connect the crystals and just pretty much like um, buy or trade a, a set and charge that up. I'm going to Reiki charge them for, for my packages and Ooh. that way you just like start your, your gridding and gives you a how-to. So good. <laughs> 